Today I'm with Nick from Pinebook UK and we're going to find out how work holding technology has evolved over the years, but most importantly, why. Nick, thanks for having us at this fantastic facility in Cannock today. Really interesting subject. It might be obvious to many, but why has work holding evolved so significantly over the years? Um, in the 1950s and 60s, most lathes tended to be manual machines. Rigidity wasn't that high. The need for micron accuracy on parts wasn't there. Speed of changeover wasn't needed. So over the years, we've needed to increase the accuracy needed, and machine tools have obviously increased because of that. And obviously, because of the need to increase the accuracy of the parts, the machine tools now have got better, so work holding needs to follow. So the work holding technology has followed the machine tool industry to a certain degree really yes because even now you've got people using 1960s technology on new machines which isn't really the best course of action why isn't it nick well because you lose rigidity you actually got really fast speeds and feeds now on, on modern machine tools necessarily some of the 1960s chucks and things like that can't cope with that so let's talk about some of the 1960s technology. Let's start with a vice, for example, on a milling machine. Yep. What problems would you get trying to use the 1960s vices on a, on a modern-day milling, machi milling machine, CNC milling machine? Um, there really isn't the power um, on the vices nowadays. The, the deflection on the jaws of the vices cause all sorts of rigidity problems when you're trying to hit the part hard with modern cutters and things like that. So you need modern work holding on a modern machine tool. So is, is it safe to say then, Nick, you know, by using 1960s technology on modern day machinery, you've got to reduce your feeds and speeds to allow for any vibration that you might get from clamping that component. Ab absolutely, speeds and feeds are the main thing. If you buy a machine tool, you want to use the maximum speed and the maximum feed to do that. And everybody knows about having the best cutting tools to do that, but you also need work holding to hold the part rigidly and accurately. So we'll, get, we'll be moving on to you know how cutting tool strategies have also influenced the ev evolution of work holding shortly. But let's look at Heimbook as a company. Mm -hmm. Tell our audience how it started and how the work holding solutions has evolved with your business. Um, it started at 1950s in a garage, really, with one guy making collet chucks and normal collets, which are the normal sort of spring type collets that uh, a lot of people still use today but aren't capable, really, of modern speeds and feeds on the machine tools. And how are, have they evolved now, Nick? Can you explain to our audience the, the evolution of your technology and the benefits that you get from it? Yeah, I mean, now we've come to this with collets uh, nowadays, we call them clamping heads, actually, uh, where we've got perfectly parallel clamping, rigid uh, clamping, and micron accuracy changeovers, which literally take a few seconds. So it's all about eliminating vibration, yep. um, increasing the accuracy, mm -hmm. and running your machine tools to its, to its maximum, maximum capabilities. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's, that's what we're looking at, Nick. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I'm going to try and explain what deflection is in collets. It's quite easy to explain deflection in a vice, but to explain deflection in collets is, is probably a little bit more difficult. Now, let's look at how the collets have evolved over the years. So they started with spring collets, for example. Um, but what happens with spring collets is, is that as they clamp, they will spread. So you're not actually holding on the full length of the shaft that you're looking to hold. And this can cause deflection, vibration, and bad concentricity. So through design, Heimbook now have designed collets that don't spread. And what does that mean? It means that it will hold on the length 
that you're looking to hold, the depth of the part. So Heimbrook actually recommend a minimum length or holding length of four millimeters. And you can be guaranteed that the collet will actually hold on that full length evenly. And this eradicates vibration, deflection, and ultimately gives you a more accurate part. So we've just learned uh, about how machine tools have really influenced the work holding technology evolution over the years. And I'm joined by Dave now to look at how components um, on complex components have evolved over the years and how that's affected work holding technology. Dave, brilliant to see you again, as always. Well, you look at a part like this, Geo, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you'd never have dreamt of machining something like that in one hit on a machine. Now, this was done on a mill turn. And what's more interesting about this, this was done on a single support from a chuck held on four mil, not between centers, as you can see. We hold that on four mil, and that was machined out of solid. So it wasn't supported at the other end. Not at all. And you're only held on four millimeters. And regardless of the material, you mentioned this was a demo part, but if it was a titanium part, if it was made of ink canal, the process would be exactly the same, still holding only on four mil. Yes. You see, in the past, with the old sprung type collets, they didn't collapse evenly and you wouldn't have been able to do this. But our collet, because it collapses evenly, you're able to hold on four mil, preferably using an end stop as well. I agree with you 100 percent. So that's a perfect example of how the work holding evolution and the technology has evolved. And subsequently, you can start making some complex parts in one operation. Now, one part that really springs to mind to me, Dave, is gears. I mean, the evolution of gear manufacture mm -hmm. has been massive in the UK and around the world recently. What solutions do you have for this? Well, we offer now uh, a system called the Mando G211, which is a very rigid, slim profile unit that, that you can fit on a gear hobber, gear grinder, gear shaper type machine. And you've got to remember, you know, the old mandrel sleeves you know the split sleeves were made of a sprung steel which had got a certain amount of give in them you know the movement in them was was horrendous really and you know this new mandrel we've got is a very solid bit of kit so this is for holding components internally yes internal clamping of you know gear gear bodies and how would they have been made before well on, on a uh, on a split mandrel i would imagine you know which were made of spring steel. And what are the disadvantages of this? Well, no, uh, l less rigidity. That was the issue. So it all boils down again to rigidity, vibration, and, and, and what are the results of having a component or a gear in this scenario clamped securely? Well, you know, less vibration, you know, faster feed and speeds, better surface finishes. So this is what an expanding mandrel looks like. This is a reconditioned one that's been returned to Heimbuch. Now, you can see the actual expanding mandrel here, but you can even put end stops in here so that the gears, if the gear was what you were making, um, has got something to, to, to drop back to and you get repeatability if you're doing a batch of these gears. And exactly the same with the collet. The expanding mandrel is designed in such a way that it will clamp the part internally across the length that it's looking to hold um, thus not giving you any vibration and being able to cut them gears using some of the latest cutting tool technology such as power skiving on some of the most complex and fast cutting machines in the world. Cutting strategies have also changed over the years with faster feeds and speeds and smaller depths of cut. This has also influenced work holding technology in some cases, especially on fifth axis machines when making them complex components all in one. With centric grippers being used most commonly, biting into 3mm excess material and presenting all five sides of the components to the spindle. Let's talk to Nick and learn what solutions Heimbuch offer for milling machines and fifth axis machines. Nick, we've looked at a lot of turning solutions and, and how they've evolved over the years, but what about milling solutions? Yeah, the same things really apply to the milling, milling machines. Milling machines have changed from your normal sort of Bridgeport standalone milling machines. So now the CNC five axis milling machines with a lot going on. 
but accuracies, rigidity, exactly the same on milling machines as they are on turning machines, and the ability to change over quickly from one set of work holding to another, just as important. Setup time is a massive feature that we've not really touched upon. So let's start with setups. You know, how has you know, this new work holding technology evolved in such a way that it's reduced setup times? Yeah, well, um, we've got zero point systems. Some of them are very complex, some of them are very simple. The important thing is that they're easy to use, they're repeatable, and they're rigid. Uh, we've got a Centratex system, which we use on the back of all of our um, work holding devices, which allows you to change over work holding, whether it be turning or whether it be milling, from one uh, work holding device to another, and that could be a plate, it could be a chuck, it could be a mandrel, in, th in seconds within three microns. So you're talking here palletisation? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, one and of the things is palletisation. And this yes. can also be automated? Yes, it does. Yeah. So you don't just offer work holding solutions for turning applications, you also offer an, ar an array of solutions for milling applications too. You mentioned the fifth axis machine tool. Mm -hmm. What solution, you know, what, what give us, give me a solution that you would be able to offer for a fifth axis machine tool? Well, we've got a Manoc device, which is a, a it can be power operated with a Hydrock or it can be manual operated, but it's a basically a fifth axis device that we can put onto a milling machine, you can put on the bed of a normal standard milling machine, but it allows you to use collets and work holding devices on the milling machine that you've already used on your turning machine. It's rigid, it's accurate, it can change it over quickly and it fits nearly every machine. Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, being with you today <laughs> as always. Now, you know, we've learned a lot about the evolution of work holding, but ultimately, why would end users that have watched this 10 minute topic, you know, invest in the latest technology why is it so important if whether it be your products or somebody else's yeah if you want to use a modern machine tool to its maximum potential you have to use the best add-on parts to it so you have to use the best tooling you have to use the best work holding and the work holding then has to be quick to change because then your price per part comes down and then you become competitive with all your competitors Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure. So there you have it. We really hope that you've learnt something about the latest work holding technology in this Swarf and Chips 10-minute topic.